Hey guys, what's up? It's Jesse here from Canadian DIY, and today I'm going to show you how to build this raised dog bowl holder. Hit the dirt. Good boy. If you have a big dog or a medium sized dog, it's a great option for them. That way, the food is raised up nice and easy for them so they can swallow better. I'm going to show you how to build it right now. I had this piece of plywood laying over in my scrap pile for a while and it was kind of an odd size. I didn't really know what to do with it. So this worked out perfectly. You know, all I'm doing first is I'm taking and finding the center of my board and then I'm going to find the center of each half. Now you can adjust this depending on the spacing of your bowls, depending on the size of your bowls, everything like that. But this is what I wanted to go with. After that, you're going to take, find the outside and the inside diameter of your bowl. That way approximately, you know about how big to make your hole. Then take your compass, you're going to make it half of the size of the total diameter of your bowl. And I'm just going to take, put it on your center mark, and I'm just going to mark out each hole for each bowl. And then after that, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to double check, make sure our measurements are all good. I'm just going to put the bowl over top, make sure I don't see the line anywhere on either side. And then I'm just going to drill a pilot hole from the bottom out to the top. And then from there, I'm just going to take, cut it out with the jigsaw. You're going to use the hole to drop your blade down into and then just spin the board around until obviously you've got the hole cut out. From there, I moved over to the table saw. Now I've got all the legs here. They're just nothing more than some scrap two by twos I had laying around. I made sure that they're all even on the one side, then I ganged them all together and I cut them all, made sure they're all going to be the exact same length. From there, we're just going to head back over to the table. I've got my combination square set to a quarter of an inch. That way I can make sure that the inset is the same on all of the legs. And then after that, I'm just going to take my tape measure and then measure in between each board for my aprons. After that, I'm going to take the one by threes that I'm using for my apron boards or my stretchers and I'm going to mark my lengths and then the same thing as I did with the legs. I'm going to gang them together and make sure that my cuts are done at the exact same time to make sure that my boards are the same length on each side. I'm going to cut the short boards and the long boards the exact same way. After that, we'll just take our Craig jig. I'm going to set it up for three quarter inch stock. You can use whatever type of joining method you want here, but I'm just using a Craig jig. It's quick, it's fast, it's easy. If you don't have a big one like this, don't worry. You can still use a small one. Whatever method you choose, just go ahead and use it. And then after that, it's everybody's favorite part, sanding. Now, I like to do a pre-sand on everything. Um, it's just a lot easier to get into all the little nooks and crannies and stuff like that without a, the whole thing being assembled. So if you want, do it beforehand like I do, or you can wait until you're done afterwards. Either way, it doesn't matter. After that, I'm just going to take and I'm going to space up my stretcher boards or my aprons up a quarter of an inch with just some scrap plywood. Then I'm going to take and attach my legs, my short boards, and I'm going to clamp everything together. Now the reason I'm doing the short ones first is because if I did the long sides and I tried to attach the short ones, obviously you see the drill and the bit are way too long to fit inside of the table when it's fully assembled. So make sure to do your short sides first and then after that we'll attach the long sides. So we're going to build both short sides and then attach the long sides afterwards. Go ahead and put a lot of glue into each joint. Clamp everything together, make sure it's flush on top, and then go ahead and add the long sides, add your screws. And before you know it, you got a frame assembled. Now for the last side here, go ahead and put your glue on and I'm just opening up the frame ever so slightly just so I don't smear all the glue all over the sides and completely lose it out of the joint. Other than that, same thing as before, just clamp it together, make sure it's level and flush on top and screw it together.
Okay, so now all I've done is I've taken and I've added the top onto it and I've just clamped it down to the frame. <clears throat> what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to take just a piece of pine that I've ripped down to about a half of an inch wide and about seven eighths of an inch long. I've already mired this end off at a 45 and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and just hold it up, mark my other end. Now we'll go cut this at the miter saw and then we'll nail it on. And now back at the stand, test it out. And we've got a perfect fit, so now we'll go ahead and we'll glue and nail this on. And then we'll continue our way around the table until we're all done. The trim around the top is exactly the same as everything else. Just run a bead of glue around it. Make sure it's flush on top and your corners are lining up perfectly. After that, just a couple of quick brads. I'm using inch and a quarter brads. Not too long, that way you don't have to worry about them coming up or deflecting inside. And then after that, it's just a whole lot of rinse and repeat. Make sure your corner is good. Mark the other end. Clamp it in place. Glue it. Everything like that. Um, make sure to also put a lot of glue on all of your miter joints as well, all of your corners. That way they don't start to open up or anything like that over time as things expand and contract. They'll hold their line perfectly. One thing you're definitely going to want to do is just use a clamp just to hold it in place like that. Just acts as that third hand, that way you're not trying to balance it left and right, up and down, angled, everything like that. Just makes it a lot easier to just drive in your brads with that clamp holding it in place. And then on your last piece of trim, go ahead and mark it just a little bit long. And again, just like everything else, sneak up on the cut. If it's a little bit long, you can always shave a little bit more off. Add a lot of glue into your corners and then nail it on just like the rest. And voila, simple as that. Now again, if you don't want to go ahead and use the trim, you can just get some iron on edge banding and go about it that way. I just wanted to trim mine out. After that, went ahead, add a little bit of wood filler to all my nail holes, give it a quick sanding. And then from there on, I'm just going to take my router and round over the edges. If you don't have a router, you can sand it with a sander. You can do it with your hand, however you want, or you can just leave the sharp edge. It's entirely up to you. After that, just a coat of stain. Now, I'm using an ebony stain here. I just think that the black stain with the uh, stainless steel bowls will look really, really good. You can go ahead and stain this whatever color you want with whatever brand of stain with you want. I'm using Verithane Ultimate. I just like the fact that with Verithane Ultimate, it's one coat. Just like every other stain in the world, wipe on your stain or brush it on however you want to do it and then wipe it off with another separate dry towel. The thing with stains is obviously you want the grain to show through the wood, so you want to make sure that you buff it off as well. Uh, check your instructions depending on what stain you're using. Some of them have a dry time. You have to let them sit and soak in. With the, with the Verithane Ultimate, you pretty much just wipe it on and off. And from there, I'm just using a water-based clear, not an oil-based clear. You can use whatever you want. I'm using the water because it's non-yellowing. It doesn't warm up the wood. Alright guys, and the last step, 
we're just going to attach the frame to the top. We're just going to use these simple little angle brackets and some half inch screws. We're just going to put them on each side right here. Two of them is going to be more than enough to hold the top on this guy. So go ahead and just put. Simple as that. Nice little raised dog bowl holder for Slade. Resembles just a little table of his own. I hope you guys like this video. If you do, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share it around. If you guys build this, link me up on any of my social media accounts. I would love to see it. I respond to every comment down below as well. I'll have everything I use linked down in the description box too. I'll see you in the next one.